Now, um, what I want to do is um, just uh, state something called as um, JL lemma, uh, which is a very commonly used tool to deal with scale, um, especially in the context of machine learning. I um, will state the, you know, the statement of this lemma um, and then just give a high level overview of where it could be used in, in the context of machine learning and then we will try to understand more ramifications of this lemma as we go along in this course, right. So, as I said, our goal is to use randomization to deal with scale uh, and for that purpose we are just building tools and probabilities and now I will state the first real lemma where, you know, the, you can make use of this. Right. So, this is called as the um, Johnson Linder Strauss Lemma or sometimes called as the JL Lemma. Okay. So, it's, it states the following. So, if you are given n points in a high dimensional space, let us call this space R D, let us say you are dealing with some data and these data are in high dimensional space uh, and, uh, and let us say an error parameter, let us call this epsilon within 0 1, then let me state the, state the lemma and then we will talk about it, then there exists a mapping uh, let us call that f which maps my d dimensional vectors data points to some k dimensional data points where k is uh, some something like logarithm of n by epsilon squared um, such that you know for all x comma y um, you know if I measure if I do the mapping f on x and mapping y, f on y and then measure their distance squared, uh, let us say Euclidean distance. So, then I can say that that distance squared uh, is not too far away from what I would have gotten had I not done the mapping. <coughs> so, this is the JLM. So, I am going to read this again and then we will parse this. Given n points in some high dimensional space, uh, let us say in R d, where d is very large and some error parameter epsilon and we will talk about this parameter in a bit. What we are saying, what the lemma says is that there exists a way to map these high dimensional data points to a different dimension um, using the mapping f, it maps d to k where k is something like log n divided by epsilon squared. Um, but what is the what is the advantage of going from d to k? The advantage is that, you know, if you had to measure distances in the d dimensional space for any two data points x and y in the d dimensional space, let us say I measure the distance and I got the distance as, you know, some x minus uh, y squared. Now, if I do the mapping, and bring d to k dimension and then I do the same distance computation in the in the k dimensional space, well the distance between any two points or the distance squared between any two points in the k dimensional space is not too far off from the distance between any two points in the original space, right. So, in what sense it is not too far off? So, the distance is you know. Um, some factor, multiplicative factor, uh, upper bounded by a multiplicative factor 1 plus epsilon on the distance in the original space and 1 minus epsilon um, on the distance in the original space, right. So, it is upper bounded and lower bounded by 1 plus epsilon times x minus y squared and 1 minus epsilon times x minus y squared. Uh, just to give a sense of uh, numbers, so let us say we had, you know, some um, 10 power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right. So, 10 power 6 data points. Uh, now, let us say all these data points were in some 10,000 dimensions. You can think of these as some kind of a word embedding 
uh, in a deep neural network, right? So where every point there are there are 10,000, 10 power 6 words and each word gets a 10,000 dimensional feature map, right? So after you learn like a deep network or, you know, NLP based network. Now, uh, now if you have a downstream task, now you have to use 10,000 features to deal with the downstream task, right? So if the downstream task somehow uses, you know, distances between these points, pairwise distances between these, you know, any two points in this 10,000 or, you know, 10 power 6 points. Um, now, if that is the only thing that matters for my downstream task, then I can either work with the 10,000 dimension or what the JLMR is saying is that there is a way in which you can map these 10 power 6 points to a k dimensional space from, you know, from 10,000 dimensional d dimensional space to, you know, I'll map it to k, which is order of log 10 power 6 by epsilon squared, you know. Um, and let's say for this example, if I set epsilon as 0.1, then this this will become k is some order of 6 log 10 by uh, 1 by 100, right? So 0 0.1 squared, which is 100, um, which is roughly log 10, let's say it's base 2. So rough, uh, roughly, you know, 3 point something. So 6 into 3 point something is, let's say, 20. So this is by 20 into 100 which is like 2000. You originally had a 10,000 dimensional word embedding for each of your 10 power 6 words. Uh, and now what the JLMR is saying is that, well, if all you want to do with these 10,000 dimensional embeddings is somehow measure pairwise distances and make some, you know, um, decisions based on that, then you don't really have to worry about dealing with 10,000 dimensional data you can reduce the dimension by, there is a way to reduce the dimension, we are not saying how yet. Uh, the lemma says there is a map f which can take these 10,000 dimensional vectors, map it to 2,000 dimension such that what is the guarantee you have? Well, because we have set epsilon equals 1.1, the guarantee that we have is that, you know, if I take any two vectors in the k dimension, let us say f of x, and f of y, where x and y were originally in the 10,000 dimension, this belongs to r2000 now, f y belongs to r2000 because you now I have reduced the dimension by mapping, doing the f map. Now this distance squared after I map it, right, so earlier this was in r10,000, you know, this was my distance, right, so this was my distance. Now I have mapped this to r2000, some point here somewhere here, right? So now this becomes my distance and I want to, it's, it's the same point, right? So this is x, this is y, this is f of x, this is f of y and I want to measure the distance between f of x and f of y as compared to x, y. And now what this is saying is that if this is 2000, the 2000 came because we set epsilon to be 0.1 and this distance which is f of x minus f of y squared is at most 1 plus 0.1 times x minus y squared and at least 1 minus 0 0.1 times x minus y squared, which is, you know, 0 0.9 times x minus y squared and it can, it has to be more than 0 0.9 times this distance and it cannot be more than 1.1 times x minus y squared, which means that, you know, it has to be in this range or in this range, right? So this, you know, it the distance can be at max this much or at, and at least this much, right? So it has to be one number between this value and this value, which is this distance is some number which is 0.9 times the original value, um, greater than or equal to 0.9 times the original value and less than or equal to 1.1 times the original value, which means that almost close to original value, right? So there's nothing much that we lose. And that seems like a, you know, very powerful, theorem, right? So, or rather lemma, right? So, because uh, now what I can do is that I have reduced from 10,000 dimension to 2,000 dimension, um, but the only thing I have lost is, you know, an epsilon factor that to, in an additive sense, uh, for the distance squares, right? So, which means that, let's say, if I want to do some kind of a nearest neighbor algorithm, right, um, where, which relies crucially on distances, um, and, and if I want to learn these word embeddings and then I want to somehow make a classification based on the nearest neighbor, 
Now, that's that's an algorithm that depends purely on distances. And what JLMO is saying is that, well, there's a wonderful way to map high dimensional data to low dimensional data and then run your algorithm on the low dimensional data, which might be much faster because distance computation is only on 2000 dimension in this case, as opposed to 10,000 dimension, right? Um, so this is what is called as the johnson lindstrauss lemma, which is a way to map high dimensional data to low dimensional data while preserving distances and distance squares. Um, and it's not at all obvious why this should work and, you know, uh, what kind of, uh, um, you know, phase. Right? The more important question is, you know, first of all, why should it work and, you know, how can we make it work, right? So this is not at this point giving me a recipe as to what this F should be. Right. So, how do I map these high dimensional feature embeddings that I have to low dimension so that, you know, I can perform the nearest neighbor search in the low dimension? That's not clear at all, right? So, it says that there is a mapping F, right? So, but we need to know what this mapping F is and how we can use these mapping, right? So, for our advantage. So, so but then it's a great thing to know that there is such a mapping um, and, and next time what we will see is that, you know, some examples of such mappings, one simple example, standard example of such a mapping. Um, and then we'll try to argue why, you know, when you have a mapping like the one that we will talk about, um, this property should hold, right? And and I'm 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 sure all of you can appreciate the power of this lemma, right? So because you know you might be in a very very high dimensional space, and the 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 great thing is that the low dimension that you're mapping to, you know, depends only on the number of data points you have and the error that you are willing to tolerate and not the original dimension D itself. That's the greatest thing about this lemma, right? So I might be in a billion dimensional space or a trillion dimensional space, right? So it doesn't matter, right? So the low dimension where the, you know, pairwise distances are going to be preserved is going to depend on the number of data points I have, right? So that is what determines which is how much low dimension can I go to as opposed to the original dimension, which means that I might have a very huge dimensional data, but then I might have only, if, you know, a bunch of points, right? So it is the number of points that I have that determines, you know, how much can I reduce the dimension to. It doesn't matter what high dimension I am actually in. Right? Now, that's a great thing, right? So which means that, you know, if there are fewer points than the dimension that we are dealing with, then, you know, we might be able to significantly reduce the dimension from D to a very, very small dimension where the distances will still be preserved. And, and that will significantly reduce computation and we can beat scale, right? Um, so how exactly can we do this depends on the specific function F. Um, and as we'll see next time, this will be like a randomized mapping. And that's why we need all the tools of, uh, you know, probability that we have built up so far including concentration inequalities, union bounds, and, you know, A implies B means probability of A less than probability of B and those kind of things. We'll use some of these tools to analyze, you know, come up with an F and then analyze why it's such an F should work. Okay, so at this point, we will uh, close uh, this lecture with the, with the statement of Johnson's Lindstrauss lemma, um, and then we'll talk more about, you know, this choice of F and how we can develop algorithms using this as we go along in this course. Thank you.